Hey, I'm Alex Rackler from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Hens from Little Rocket Games. Hens is a 1-4 to four player set collection game which players are gathering sets of hens. You're going to have these sets of hens over here, you're going to have a hen, and you're trying to lay out your own 3x4 tableau in order to score as many points as possible from your hens as well as from the scoring goal in play. In every game, you're going to have one of a bunch of different scoring goals. It's going to take this one. This is this is if you have... Well, you know what? Let's actually start playing, and I'll, and I'll teach you how this one works because it'll make more sense. So we have a scoring goal in play. We have our hand of cards, and every turn, you're going to draw two cards. Now, you can draw two cards from the deck over here but you can also draw cards from your opponent's discard piles which we'll draw we'll start by drawing from the deck but then i'll i'll start showing you how that plays out so we're going to draw from the deck over here we have these cards over here and then we're going to place our first hand down just looking at the board over here we can see that probably placing a five makes sense for my starting tableau we're going to have the other player to to simulate the other players for right now we'll just have them create a discard pile because part of what you do is you play a card and discard a card play discard play discard i'm going to discard this pattern over to my own discard pile which we'll place off to the side over here then we're going to have the other players simulate their turn by simply just discarding a card. We won't worry about their tableau for right now. So, other player does their turn. They draw two. They're going to discard a card. Let's put a discard over here. Another player over here is going to go ahead and they're going to move this. This tells you what hens are kind of in play. And we're going to go ahead and have another player discard a card over here. So, you can see we have some discards options over here on the table. I cannot draw my own discard. You never can. But you can draw from the deck or other players' discards. To that end, looking at the board, I would actually really like this six over here. And then past that, I'll draw one from the top of the deck. Ooh, we got a yellow three. That's good. Now, our second card is a little bit more important than our first card. Our first card goes anywhere we want. Our second card needs to go towards building out that 3x4 grid with some rule restrictions. The first rule restriction is that you can place any color next to any color. Sorry, you can place any color. Any card can be placed next to the same color on its own. So, for example, this three over here is a completely legal play. The problem is I cannot place the three yellow here because when you're placing a different color, you can only be offset by one number. So I could place the six because it's only offset by one, but I cannot place the yellow three next to a purple five. So those are the two rules as far as placing. And if you ever can't place anything, you're going to place a card face down instead, which will be worth negative one point, but anything can go next to it. You don't want those. You want to try to avoid those if possible. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and place something down. You know what? Let's go ahead and place our yellow six down. Or although, yeah, let's go ahead and place the yellow six down. So we're going to place that yellow six down. This is important because it has a metal and it has three eggs. The more eggs, the better. The numbers are just about the replacement rules and restrictions, but the eggs are how you're actually going to score points as well as medals. From the rest of our hand over here, we're going to have to discard something. I'm going to, I think I'm going to discard the purple over here. Honestly, my whole hand is good for me right now, but I'll discard this over here. We'll go to the other player's turns. They're going to, again, discard a card. Discard a card that's going for whatever the engine they're going for. I'm going to draw two from the top because I don't want to draw from, you know, their piles over here. We have that five black, which has two metals and two eggs, which is good, but not necessarily what I need over there. Let's go ahead and place this five purple down over here. We'll continue to establish our pattern, and let's go ahead and discard that black. Someone might want it, but I think I still want the purple. I'd rather have the purple access just in case. Uh, you'll see why soon enough. We'll have another player play a card. Again, we got a yellow. That's good. We want the yellow. And we have a gray. This Sultan over here, by the way, one of my favorite cards just in terms of the sheer chicken, the way it looks. The art on these cards is ridiculous. But on my turn, I'm going to draw a card. I'll draw that three yellow. I do want it. And I'll also draw off the top of the deck where I drew a blue five, which doesn't really help me at all. This is where we have to be mindful how we place things. Because, for example, I can place this down over here. But I will not be able to place this over here because you have to follow all side restrictions. Meaning, even though this is a legal placement for here, it's not a legal placement for here, so I cannot do that. I could go ahead and place it for a little further down over there. We have to be mindful of how we build out our grid. For right now, I think I'm going to keep it simple, keep it stupid. I'm going to place this, you know what, actually, just for the sake of showing you how things work, I'm going to actually place this up here so you can start to see something. Because now we can look at our scoring goal. Looking at our scoring goal over here, the first way you're going to score extra points is you're going to score six points if I have a column that is exclusively two eggs in that column. Two eggs, two eggs, two eggs. That means I'm currently scoring six points. The secondary scoring goal is I will get two points for every grouping of three chickens of the same color. So as I create groupings of chickens of the same color, I'll get an additional two points per grouping there. Additionally, you're going to score points as follows. Let's go ahead and just place two more cards so you can see how this goes. Uh, once I get to the uh, second round over here, I'm going to place this down over here, and then let's pretend I place this over here. Just so you can see that I now have six cards on the board because once you have six cards on the board You're going to take your rooster and you're going to put it down on one grouping of cards And this is where you want to gamble because 
At the end of the game, you're going to score points for your largest grouping of cards counting the eggs on that color. So for example, right now, if the board state were currently right now like this, then right now purple would be my largest grouping, so I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of purple because of the eggs on those cards. The problem is, wherever you place your chicken, your rooster, that grouping is going to score as well with one small problem. If I place the rooster onto the purple set of cards, then in this situation, I would score the purple once as my largest group, but I would not score it again because it already scored. Versus if you put your rooster on any other grouping, then you're, you're, you're gonna score your largest group, which is purple, and whatever grouping the rooster is on. You can see that over here, we have the player's name, we have scoring your largest group, scoring your rooster group, scoring points for your medals, every three medals is worth two points, scoring negative points for your any cards that are placed face down, scoring the top goal, and then the bottom goal, and then adding that all up, that's going to be how you score in this game. So after six rounds of play, you're going to place your rooster, and then you're going to play another six rounds of play, continue the game, but leaning into however you started to build things, and then, you know, add it all up and score it like I just told you. That is effectively how you play hens. Draw two cards, play a card, discard a card, try to create groupings of the same color, try to ideally make sure you don't get stuck into a situation where you can't play cards, which will happen towards the end, and then try to have as many points as possible by the end of the game, which brings me to a review starting off with ease of play. The game is really easy to dive into. It's a short game, plays in maybe 20, uh, probably more than 20, around 30 minutes or so I'd say uh, for a game. Uh, plays one to four players, easy to dive into, easy to teach, easy to get tabled, all those things, Very the rules are very short, very, very accessible game. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is the selecting cards and trying to just build out your grid is a satisfying experience. Drawing two cards, being mindful of your opponent's discards, trying to play into your, into your grid, trying to be mindful of how you condition certain cards so you can always play something over here here, I can only play a 5 or a 6 of these colors, well, technically of any color, but ideally I want those colors, and this card is going to tell you what you actually have in play. The distribution of all the eggs, the numbers, anything in red, there's two of anything not in red, so if you're going for those yellows or for those greens or anything that's a little higher value, you have fewer cards you can actually get your hands on. So, for example, that yellow and purple 6, there's only one 6 over here, there's two 5s, so I might have the opportunity, but the two 5s, that purple, I would use the two 5s. So I'm not entirely sure what's going to go here, I already may have screwed up up based on the way I placed out this grid and you have to plan around that as you go through it so there's a degree of planning as you try to think what's available what's your likelihood of getting the thing and just generally trying to go for that while balancing the goal in play so you're balancing there's a bunch of different goals over here so you have this whole stack of like I don't know 10 or so goals and they're all going to have different ways you're trying to be mindful of as you play through it but overall it's just a satisfying fun experience to draw a card play a card discard a card rinse and repeat for 25 minutes 30 minutes until you see who won the game as far as what I don't like in the game, the scoring itself is kind of anticlimactic. The puzzle of trying to build out your cars is fine, and it all does a job, but actually scoring the game kind of feels like, it kind of feels, I guess, you're going to see players who built out their grid better, and players who scored better, and the whole thing kind of, this it, it's the, the process of doing it I enjoy, the end game scoring I'm kind of like underwhelmed whenever I play the game. It doesn't feel like there's that much of a puzzle here. There's a, it's a satisfying puzzle, it's satisfying to build things out, but it's not rewarding. I guess. Ultimately, that's probably how I describe hens. It's satisfying without being rewarding. I'll also say that players, for the most part, uh, players t tend to play naturally to their colors. I Meaning you kind of have one of two possible states. Either one is two players are both vying for those purple cards, and then ultimately those two players are at a disadvantage compared to any other players at the table who aren't fighting over cards. That's one possible game state. But I would say that, first of all, it's its own problem to a degree, because again, if we incidentally to go for the same color, we will have a harder time because we're both fighting over those cards. What I found more often happens when I play this game is players go for whatever colors they start off with, and they start building things out, and then very quickly you find cards in other players' discard piles because they can't hold on to all the cards, and it doesn't become that tight of a game. It becomes a game where we naturally, one, you have two game states. You naturally acclimate to your color, and then it's just you're going to get those cards and you won't have a hard time, or you have two players fighting over a color, which only works in a two-player game, any other player count, and it ends up favoring the players outside that. It's a little too simple in terms of how you get your hands on things, how much room you have to hold things back, that it doesn't lend itself to a ton of, of tight choices in the game space. It's fairly procedural as it goes through things. As far as I can see, others not liking, first of all, the disparity between the cards and the eggs. It, it, placing cards down is one puzzle, scoring is a different puzzle, and they feel very different in how that plays out. I, I'd say overall that when you go through the game, when you play it out, you might have an amazing looking grid that looks great, and you may not score points because you chose a, a set of cards that had lower scoring possibilities as you go through it. The game has that disparity between things that just takes a little bit away from the reward of feeling like you've built something good, but actually having it be 
only okay at the end of the game. I'll also say that in the game, you'll often have that late oh no moment. And that's not necessarily a problem, that's the, actually part of the strategy of the game for me, which is why I don't mind it. But you have that late oh no moment where you sit there and you're playing the game, and then towards the end, you're like, huh, turns out the only things I could fit here are the two cards I already played, so it looks like nothing will go there. You're going to have those moments in the game where you realize you either need a specific card or you just set yourself up poorly, and that is where some of the strategy comes in, where taking that moment and learning from it to the next game, so you can go and be like, okay, great, last game I kind of screwed up with that one placement and I lost two points that way, but I'm going to do a little better this time. So to me, it's a good thing, but you're going to play through the game and have that moment at some point as you go through it. As far as final thoughts on Hens, Hens is a totally fine game. Like I said already, it is satisfying without rewarding. There's nothing wrong with Hens, but I don't think it also, I don't think it does much to stand out in a crowded marketplace. It has endearing art. I like the chickens in it. I like the game. The pace is fine. It, it gives you scoring goals to give you a small degree of variability. Uh, the overall teach and accessibility is overall just very easy to dive into. It checks all the boxes of being a totally fine game, but it's not one I would particularly recommend. It's one that I have fun with, but there are just better games in this space doing what Hens is trying to do. For me, this is a 3 out of 5. I enjoyed it. I don't feel the need to go back to it, nor particularly recommend it. But yeah, if I'm playing it, I'll have a good time as I do so. Speaking of which, if you're looking for other game recommendations, first of all, I highly recommend Arboretum. This game has a strong vibe of Arboretum. Arboretum is a much tougher game, much much tighter game. I will say Arboretum is a meaner game. There's a lot more going on there, which means if you are looking for something more gateway friendly, I think Hens will check that box as being just a little bit more gateway friendly compared to Arboretum's very, very, very uh, mean gameplay. And then if you're looking for another game that has a bit of that placement puzzle as you go through this, this game has a placement puzzle you have to try to figure out how everything fits together. If you're looking for another game that will do that for you while being very accessible, while being very easy to dive into, I highly recommend Keystone North America. I think it's a fantastic game from Rose Gauntlet Entertainment that very much has the same puzzle, but has a lot more going on that keeps me invested as I go through it. And with that, that's been my review of Hens. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.